Hello, everybody. Uh, it's great honor for me to stand here talking in front of you, and I'd like to express my gratitude to all of you, and especially to the organizers for this huge and very grand meeting in our profession. So today's my topic is drilling and placement protocol for any time loading concept. And this is very important to go step by step and know the special details of this protocol because we need 100% successful uh, treatment in our everyday practice. So I am from Georgia. I am Orland Maxillofacial Surgeon. And I am not going to speak now how amazing and excellent doctor I am. I am just uh, here to show you from how beautiful country I am and what an excellent product we have from this uh, company, from Dr. Ho, with his unstoppable effort of development and uh, changing the mind in the field of dental implantology. So, uh, let's speak about the, uh, our topic. As uh, Dr. Alves well pointed out in his very informative presentation, minimizing bone trauma in the dense bone is very important. So, my question is, how do we still get the optimal primary stability that we want in order to enable any time loading? So, if our goal is to have the good primary stability, we can't do this just in the soft bone. We need the hard bone for the primary fixation. And how we figure out a way to engage the fixture into the dense cortical bone so that we get a good amount of fixation. So, for supporting from this area. So, what we want is these two issues. We need every possible fixation from all part of the implant and also all density of bone. And how? How can we do this? Can we do this with other implant systems? And let's take a closer look at the general protocol. Now, this is the well-known, actually, we are using in our everyday practice. To be honest, I used this. Now I am going directly, like any time, and see my uh, concept protocol, drilling protocol. In the soft bone, we need undersized drilling. So, first, we clinicians, we assess the bone density, then we make drilling, undersized drilling, or one less to step drilling, it calls undersized drilling, and we are putting the implant by self-compaction, by self-taping. And in the other hand, on the other hand, in the case of hard bone, as usual, we are going by all step of drilling protocol. We are making final drilling. We are making sometimes larger the crystal area. Sometimes we need even countersink to and then placing the implant. So let's see how well we did in this scenario. So, to avoid over compression in the hard bone, as I mentioned, uh, we need conventionally widen the dense part of the crystal area. So, how could we get the great insertion torque? Because the implant was fixed into the hard bone. But now, let's take a closer look to the uh, situation. Where exactly this initial fixation was coming from? Only the tips of the threads are in the contact with crystal bone. Only this small part is contacting to the dense bone. And maybe this was not a problem for conventional loading. Because during the healing period, blood will fill these caps, and then also integration process will start, and we will uh, get a healed bone uh, surrounding the implant. But, but, in our case, we need other fixation. We need fixation from full body. Let's see, analyze these results. The, in the crystal widening situation, 
destructive stresses were concentrated in the narrow bone contact area of widened crystal cortical bone, all in, in this place. And it is very important in our case because sometimes uh, this compression gives us bone resorption in this area and sometimes it turns into perimplantitis. Does this look like it achieved optimal primary stability? I don't think so. As usual, in our practice, we are dividing bone density in four types, T1, 2, 3, 4. This is very well known classification. But uh, do we have only one kind of bone density in our practice when we are placing the implant? No. We have always the combination of bone densities and bone parts around the implants in all or around the, or surrounding the whole body of our implant. And for example, in these cases, D4, we know this is D4, yeah? But always, as usual, we have the crystal area, which is so hard, and we need to deal with this situation. If we go, for example, soft bone protocol scenario, what we will have, what we will have, undersized drilling and we can't avoid over compression in the coronal area, on the crystal part of our uh, implant. But if we go in other hand, on the other way to the hard bone protocol, we will have the lack of fixation because there is a big gap uh, between implant and bone. So what we need, uh, we need more contact. They can work for conventional loading. They may give us the sufficient insertion torque value, but does this mean that they give us the sufficient primary stability? I'd say no, no. So what we need, as we mentioned, we need every possible fixation from all part of the implant and all density of bone. And now, how can we do this? This is the where the CMI fixation concept comes in. This is a unique CMI concept offered by Dr. Ho uh, to the whole world, and it works the same way in all countries, as it was said by Dr. Jeffrey Platt in Colorado, in Thailand, in Georgia as well, and in other countries also. If we go step by step and understanding this concept. So let's uh, go to each step, uh, to each uh, issue step by step. We want fixation from all part of the implant. We want fixation from the coronal part for the implant, of the implant. We want fixation from the middle part of the implant and from the apex. We don't just want it from only the tip of the threads. We need it from all part of the thread. In other words, we want to achieve maximum bone-to-implant contact rate, bone-to-implant contact, bone-implant contact ratio, leaving just only enough microspace to enhance the osteointegration. And we need every fixa uh, fixation from all part of the implant. This is how it looks like in the conventional situation and in the uh, situation when we, uh, what we want to achieve, maximum bone implant contact ratio. So we need every possible fixation from all density of bone. So if the implant site is combination of soft and hard bone, we will prepare each site differently. If there is a crystal cortical bone, instead of crystal widening, we will prepare the bone just enough to that maximum PIC contact can be obtained, even in the crystal cortical bone. So what is the CMI implant? So how does this work? Here is the CMI fixation concept implant. It's from two, since 2006, developed by uh, Dr. Ho. C means C fixation. In the middle part, M means M fixation and also fixation by apex, which what we call the uh, uh, I fixation. 
this fixation names comes from inferior cortical wall which is of sinus which is very strong and in this cortical area we can achieve also the maximum primary stability if we engage the apical part uh, of the implant to the bone we can have eye fixation so in the next slides we will use always eye fixation when we are talking about fixation of the apex part so so it looks like like this let's understand this concept more properly this is cmi fixation when the implant is surrounded with bone with the whole body, all three are in contact with the bone. But in case of, sorry, but in case of, uh, for example, uh, sorry, what, what, sorry, 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 sorry. I just, wow. But in case of, for example, extraction socket, we, we not have the contact here in the coronal part. And uh, the coronal part of the implant is not contacted with the native bone, so we have maybe just M and I fixation, or fixation from only middle and inferior part. And, for example, CM fixation in case of uh, sinus grafting, only uh, coronal and medial part are in the contact. But in severe cases, for example, also C fixation, C fixation is achievable, and also it is very nice and very strong fixation. But it is very crucial in some cases, and our colleagues will talking about it in their presentations. And uh, eye fixation also, eye fixation, as I mentioned, even in the cortical sinus uh, floor is very strong, and we can, uh, it is very reliable. We can also fix it on the cortical apex, and this is what it looks like. Let's understand the bone density. Actually. Uh, when we are talking about this density, is D1, 2, 3, 4, we mean that it is the homogeneous bone. But in our uh, situation, we don't have you know, always the one kind of bone density because the uh, uh, bone implant is uh, surrounded always with different kind of bone densities. Uh, so, in this case, for example, the drilling, we can, uh, when we are drilling, we can uh, feel the bone density and maybe the whole bone is D3. So, we can, it simplify like D333 because the coronal and medial and inferior part are in the, uh, the D3 bone. But, for example, in the other, situation if we have the d1 cortical situation and we we have the c1 m3 and i3 and we can simplify is like d133 so for immediate placement uh, if could be c0 m2 i2 in this case zero means that the c area is not engaged in the native ball this could be written as simply D022. Determining bone density is the most fundamental and yet challenging task for clinicians. It mostly depends on our experiences and our hands and the feeling of the bone density as we do initial drilling. So the only way is to keep on practicing, keep on documenting and keep on testifying in our practice. Now that we know exactly what the inside your bone is positioned in which depths, it is time to prepare osteotomy. And the protocol is very simple, very simple to understand. The passive placement in the hard bone and the active placement in the soft bone. What does it mean? We need this hard bone for optimal fixation but we don't want to traumatize the bone. So we need to place implant passively, physiologically, respects the physiology and biology. We are first going to dr drill full-size drilling. And then we have, uh, but 
we must note that the neobiotech drill diameter is designed to be slightly narrower than other brand systems because they have the remarkable CMI fixation concept. So full size drilling plus taping, cortical taping if the hard bone is positioned in the C area, full taping in the hard bone is positioned in the MI area. And the active placement. The CMI implant is designed best for cell confection. Cell compaction. It condenses the soft bone very well and obtains the extra level of fixation even from the soft bone due to its unique taper design, unique magic threads, and the strong apex. So we can easily, we can simply place implant actively. But for this ribbon, as I mentioned, the uh, final drills are a little bit narrower. We need final drilling. And in case of D4 bone, we need undersized drilling. And once we understand what is the passive placement and what is the active placement, now we need to apply it to the predetermined CMI bone uh, concept. So CMI drilling protocol means passive placement and active placement together. Let's summarize. Passive placement, it is in the hard situation, and active placement in the uh, soft uh, bone situation. Traumaless, passive fixation, it gives us maximum BAC rate and self compaction self-taping, and it gives us additional fixation. Comparison of BAC ratio with conventional protocol and CMI drilling protocol. We can see that in the case of widening and the, uh, using countersink, we can uh, achieve just 48% of bone implant contact rate. But in the case of CMI drilling protocol with taping in the hard situation, we can achieve almost 62% of bone implant contact ratio. So let's see it, uh, how it looks like with different implant system. In the case of Neobiotech eyes to implant, it's almost 62%. And in case of, of well-known PLX with final learning, it's just almost 38%. And comparison of stress distribution also very important because with crystal widening, we have stress concentrated on the tip of the threads, as we see, saw it before early in our slides. And with taping, we have the stress evenly distributed throughout the whole thread surface, whole body of the implant. So we can obtain every possible fixation from all part of the implant and all density of bone. Now, we can summarize that traumaless surgery plus CMI fixation concept, and uh, it gives us optimal primary stability for any time loading. And we have to mention this unique CMI charting method. This concept is great for documentation. Based on the CMI fixation concept, we developed a charting method where we can record the detailed bond density for each depth, each part of the implant, the area fixation is coming from, and the final insertion torque value. And this documentation is very important for any time loading because we not only need to record the insertion torque, but also we need to understand where exactly is the fixation coming from. If the fixation is coming from all CMI area, it is the best scenario, and we can go through any time loading concept. But if we have only MI fixation, for example, and even the primary stability is approximately 40, 45 Newton centimeters, it is not a good idea to go in immediate loading and in any time loading. I am talking on precise details. So we want to go through these details. But as you know, details make perfection, and perfection is not a detail, as it was said by Leonardo da Vinci. This is uh, last slide from my presentation. So now 
we understand the CMI fixation concept, and it's time to see if they really work in reality. How should this be applied in real life cases? Does this really uh, give us the optimal fixation and eventually does this stability maintain throughout the early healing phase without any stability deep? Thus, prove the any time loading theory. Then Dr. Moncol will continue on with this and show us the real life application of the concept. And 